everybody. This is Plastic Commando coming to you today from deep behind enemy lines. I wanted to uh, revisit my technique for weathering and shading game pieces after painting. Um, I had uh, touched on this uh, technique in some of my earliest channel videos, but am revisiting today primarily as I've noticed uh, some people in watching other videos or even reading comments uh, seem to be struggling with the right approach for weathering after having uh, done a nice uh, paint job on their game pieces. Uh, first though, I'd, I'd like to say uh, choose you know, whatever method that you feel works best for you though. Uh, my own personal method for weathering and shading game pieces or even other miniatures for that matter is applying a Army Painter uh, Quick Shade. And uh, the uh, Army Painter Quick Shade comes in three different tones. Uh, there's a soft tone, uh, strong tone, and then also they have a dark tone. I typically uh, use the soft tone, but the uh, the last time that I had visited my local hobby store, they they'd only had the strong tone in stock, so I, I went ahead and picked a can up of the strong tone. Uh, but I've been using this product for about two and a half to three years, and just love it. Um, uh, I, I do a lot of painting of various kinds of miniatures, not not just uh, for Axis and Allies game pieces, but uh, quick shade, uh, it's, uh, it's kind of like a polyurethane or a varnish that's uh, really specifically designed for shading uh, your miniatures. Uh, and really the whole purpose is applying uh, shade on quickly, uh, thus the name quick shade. And, and then uh, basically uh, having, uh, you know, the ability to just to quickly shade a large number of your army miniatures or even game pieces when you uh, simply just don't have the hours to spend on each piece. And uh, for all practical purposes, you, you just don't have the time to painstakingly, after having painted, dry brush and apply detail to, to each and every single game piece. Uh, unless simply, you know, you're just trying to enter a model contest and win a major award. <laughs> but uh, uh, most of us uh, don't, don't have that luxury. Um, and uh, and again, the, the, the end result is we just want to get our miniatures painted and make them look really great and get them on the game board. I mean, that's that's really the purpose of this. So, uh, so uh, you know, you, you still, though, want to have a good-looking game piece, though, right? So, I, I mean, I think Quick Shade is perfect for this. Um, I have several videos that detail the result of shading of my game pieces. Most recently, the World War I Anzac miniatures, uh, basically just from simply applying the Quick Shade after having painted and, and, and the miniatures dried. And uh, again, I, I just I think they turned out great myself. Uh, what I want to do in this video is to go over what I think though is the best technique of applying quick shade after having painted a few game pieces. And then uh, once the quick shade dries, just uh, applying a final coat of Army Painter Matte Varnish Spray uh, to seal up and simply put the icing on the cake. Uh, so the miniatures uh, which we'll be using are a few that I'm working on currently. These, uh, uh, this is some of the ships that uh, are, are for the minor nations in uh, Global uh, 3645 that I'm working on. Uh, here we got a destroyer, and, and again these these are just base coated uh, miniatures. I've not done anything other than just uh, apply a base coat, um, and we've got here uh, got a Polish truck I'm working on. Uh, this this color scheme actually is for um, Argentina, as a matter of fact, which I'm uh, currently working on. And here we got a couple Panzer threes, and again, just uh, just a base coat of uh, uh, mustard khaki uh, for the uh, Africa Corps. Uh, you'll see the tracks uh, aren't painted. I'm gonna I'm gonna paint these tracks up uh, uh, just shortly, along with the wheels uh, for the truck, which have not been painted. And, um, and then finally, uh, we've got a couple of carriers here. This is actually the new um, Italian Sparvero carrier available through Historical Board Gaming. I've got a couple of these. And uh, actually, the, re the reason that I have these carriers, uh, you'll be seeing uh, very soon in an upcoming video, a big video, um, my uh, detailing uh, quite a few new game pieces uh, from Historical Board Gaming. And also... I do believe there's going to be a big giveaway attached to that video. So, I uh, don't want to spill the beans just yet, but stay tuned for that one. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and get uh, go ahead and get the few final touches on the trucks and the vehicle here, the tanks. 
and then uh, we'll come right back and uh, we'll get uh, started applying the quick shade. So go, let's go ahead and get to it. All right, got everything assembled, ready to go. And um, I brought in a few more pieces actually uh, for purposes of this video. And, and uh, this particular cargo ship, transporter, again for uh, minor nations, um, I just I want to show you this one real quick. You can kind of see I I've, I've already uh, applied uh, a layer of quick shade to this one. It's already been painted, and I uh, only did the top part. Uh, so this is this is kind of the idea I'm looking for. You can see the uh, weathering effect. Uh, it's still a bit shiny, but again we're gonna we're gonna take care of that with uh, some matte spray varnish. So uh, this is. Um, Again, a transport ship that I've already applied some quick shade to, but nevertheless, I wanted to bring it back in because I've got to do the uh, the bottom part as well. So we'll go ahead and put that one there. And then I brought in a few others. Uh, got a tank, and uh, over here we've got uh, two fighters, bomber, and we've got some artillery. And again, these are all uh, going to be for Argentina. Uh, some of the minor nations in Global 3645. So uh, we'll go ahead and get started on these as well. Before uh, we actually get into the quick shade part, um, I wanted to, I guess, clarify earlier, uh, my earlier statement in that um, I'm not opposed to doing any uh, dry brushing, for example. What I try to do is minimize the amount of dry brushing for smaller smaller game pieces like Axis and Allies um, that um, is lots of times going to be covered up by the use of quick shade once the stain is applied. Uh, what I tend to find in my own experience is lighter colors such as the back of this truck, uh, the canvas, uh, the uh, boat decking. Uh, I, I try to avoid doing dry brushing on the lighter colors um, if it was a bigger model, say a 135th scale model, uh, certainly I would spend some time doing quite a bit of dry brushing uh, and making that look uh, as worn as possible because it's much larger and more visible to the eye. Smaller pieces though, what I tend to find is the quick shade gets in all the creases and uh, you know all the, all the nooks that's going to uh, apply all the detail. And so when you apply a lighter shade, or excuse me, a lighter dry brushing to already a lighter shade color, uh, by the time you get um, a darker shade put on, it's lots of times you're not even gonna pay attention, not even see it. And the matte spray varnish as well is going to lighten up some of the color and, bl and, and blend it in together anyway. So again, uh, you, you can dry brush it, but lots of times what I find is lighter colors even with the uh, the Axis tanks, um, I'm not even I'm not even going to dry brush these. These are just a base coat, and you'll see in a second. I'm going to go ahead and just apply the quick shade directly to that color because again, a lot of it's going to get covered up. So I've already um, I've already got the tracks painted. Uh, spent some time on each one of these. Uh, got all the tracks, and and frankly, uh, I, I I got a fine tip brush, and uh, I think I'm still pretty good at. Um, not being too messy, but um, with uh, the idea with quick shade is if you've got um, if you've got an area that uh, maybe is not as neat and nice as you would like. Again, for purposes of a smaller game piece, quick shade is going to take care of that. Uh, it's it's never really going to be visible to the eye whatsoever. A larger model, you know, certainly you'd want to take take a little bit more caution and and uh, care. Um, so what I've done on these the darker colors. I've applied, and it may not may not actually show up too well on the um, on the video itself. But um, I did a, I did do a small amount of dry brushing on uh, this uh, dark green. This is actually a hunter green that I'm using, and with the light, it's it may not be that visible. But what I uh, what I was looking at is is if I don't do the dry brushing, this is going to end up being a very dark hunter green and we apply a darker shade uh, it's not it's not going to have the kind of the effect I'm actually looking for so I'm gonna 
do just some quick dry brushing technique on these two. Again, these are already taken care of. The others, again, I'm not going to worry about because we've got lighter colors. Even with the uh, the aircraft carriers, we've got we've got a lighter brown that uh, the quick shade will take care of. So uh, uh, for those, uh, just real quick on the uh, on the way we go about dry brushing, I've got a couple colors here which I'm using uh, that offset the dark green really well. Uh, I'm using for uh, my color schemes medium green, and these are Model Master. I've already shaken these up and stirred them. And uh, my uh, gunship gray. And what I find too, uh, uh, as well, these colors work really good together mixing, because basically if you're painting your German infantry, uh, these two colors do really well in coming up with a gray green. And that's uh, ideal for a German infantry uniform. So what we want to do is, I'm going to bring my, my other bottle over here just so I can use that as a mixing platform. Put just a little bit of green, then I'm going to, I'm going to lighten it up with some gray. And, that, and that's just a, a little bit too gray. All right, that's, that's the consistency that I'm looking for. Go ahead and get these bottles out of the way so we don't tip them over. And then, uh, again, for those maybe new to the dry brushing or looking to have a better understanding, you wanna dab all the paint off pretty much. Uh, just get your brush as dry as possible. There you go, and you can see that paint coming right off. All right, I'm gonna be back right one second. All right, got all the paint dabbed off, and basically, we're just gonna hit all the highlights of all the raised edges and the creases. The idea is not to, uh, with dry brushing, the idea is not to um, try to repaint the model, but again, just to get those highlights with the lighter color that we're literally just uh, dry brushing on here. Get all the edges that typically, whoops, out of focus there. All the edges that typically over time uh, with use, just like anything in life, is going to show wear on the paint. And uh, we get all the wheels, sprockets. And again, I'm w again with the game size. I'm not trying to get uh, you know just a uh, very good uh, or a detailed dry brush, just because of the size. What I'm trying to do is just to sort of um, lighten the color, and then uh, once we apply the quick shade. Um, a lot of these areas are gonna gonna get filled in. So, all right, dab just a little more paint here, and we get that off. Paint's actually drying just a tad. But that's all right because we've got enough in the brush still to kind of hit those highlights. Just trying to get the edges and the doors and the grill. bottom parts and again if if some of this paint excuse me paint <laughs> blends in together perhaps a little bit maybe on the tires that were painted no biggie uh, again quick shade will take care of all of that so again the idea really is with the quick shade uh, just to Put a final touch on your models. I mean, uh, your miniatures and game pieces, but uh, you don't have to spend a great deal of time with, uh, again, just doing a, an ultimate dry, dry brushing effect, ultimate paint job. 
just put a base coat on, do uh, just a minimal amount of dry brushing if need be, you know, and, and again, some, um, I'm not doing any dry brushing. This is just a straight base color that um, basically is uh, just going to have the quick shade applied directly to it. So, okay, got all my pieces that are dry brushed, the darker ones that is, and um, we're going to go ahead and get the quick shade and we'll be right back. All right, we got this quick shade open. Been doing a little bit of stirring on it here. I think we're ready to go. What I like to normally do with the quick shade, rather than try to pour it out, and again, I'm I'm not one that uh, ever really got into the dipping. Um, I attempted one time, and and if you're not willing to spend a lot of time um, taking off the excess quick shade that pulls. When you dip an entire miniature or a game piece, uh, you get something that comes out looking like this. Which you don't want. <laughs> um, some people uh, I've actually seen go as far as attaching their game piece miniature. Uh, usually larger miniatures, maybe uh, 28 scale, 28 millimeter. Um, to the end of a drill <laughs> and actually uh, pressing the drill and and slinging the excess uh, quick shade off that pulls uh, and then I've seen some that uh, just prefer just to wipe it off uh, you know once they dip it in and wipe it off I never uh, never really liked that because one it's messy yeah, I mean it gets really messy and also I like to have a little bit more control over the medium that I'm using, in this case the quick shade, um, and when you dip it in, you get um, you just you got to spend again a lot of time trying to get that pulled off, um, and um, it's just uh, it, it's time consuming and it's aggravating in my opinion. So what I like to do one technique that I enjoy doing because it does give me the more more of a flexibility to brush it on but not not deal with all the perhaps the thickness of it that can happen over time when a can gets open uh, i like to use uh, some mineral spirits uh, just some uh, turpentine to add to it to thin it out and then that way you're able to get it to the consistency that you want for your game piece uh, you may want a little extra darkening and that's totally fine depending on uh, the model that you're using um, or applying the quick shade to you may want just a, a little bit, just a hint of shade uh, that might be your preference. And if so, again, I would recommend uh, thinning it down. Now this is, this is uh, if you're going to use uh, mineral spirits, I would recommend the odorless. Trust me. <laughs> and uh, I picked this up at Hobby Lobby, um, and it's, this bottle will last uh, a long time. I mean, you, you can get through an entire uh, box of miniatures before this bottle will run out. So what I like to do is uh, just get a little um, eyedropper and thin it out. Just drop it in there. And, and again, you, you don't want to put too much mineral spirit. Just kind of kind of get a feel for it. And then just start mixing it up. And again, the whole idea is just to try to get a little bit more control over the quick shade uh, without having to just to, you know, dip your game piece. Hope you don't drop it in the bottom of the can <laughs> and have to fish it out. And then, then you're just like, why'd I do this? So uh, I think uh, I'm going to add just a tad bit more mineral spirit. All right, we'll, we'll try this one out. Give it a little more stirring effect. And, and again, I would emphasize to you know to each his own. Um, if you find a technique that you feel is most suited for you, obviously that's that's the one that will work for you. Um, you know, again, I I've just uh, I've used this product for quite some time, and and I like to have the ability to brush it on because it does give you more control over 
the quick shade. You, you can you know what you're doing in terms of not letting it pull in the areas that you don't want to pull in. So um, I, I just find just the same as with painting, you get a little more control over using a brush. So let's uh, I'm going to go ahead and start with this Panzer, and uh, I like to try to hit the bottoms initially because for one if it's a little if it's a, a bit darker than i prefer you're not going to see the bottom of the game piece and to kind of get an idea you you can see sort of the muddy effect and this this is exactly where i want it so i'm, I'm going to get the sides here don't want to get too much now you will get this on your fingers but thank God for soap and water, right? All right. Now, you know, initially, again, we thinned this out pretty good, and that's the effect I'm looking for. But initially, you know, you might say, well, hey, you know, I'm, I'm not certain after I, I do all this painting that, you know, I want to put all this uh, quick shade on there and basically muddy up my model and make it look awful. Well, again, that's the whole purpose of using mineral spirits is you, you thin it down to the, to the uh, consistency that you want and that you're looking for um, on your game piece. And, and lots of times it'll, it'll go on rather dark and you, you can kind of see here on the edge, just a tad, there we go. Kind of see how it's looking muddy. Don't worry about any of that because um, when it dries, it'll dry just a little bit lesser in tone But again, what I find is if you're not careful, when you go to dip your miniatures, you get a lot of get a lot of quick shade in there. And let's just say you've had your can open for some time, it's got air in it, it's gonna get just a little thicker. If you're not careful and you dip it in there and come it out, you get that big glob I just showed you earlier. <laughs> and uh, there we go. That's kind of the consist we're looking at. And you see how shiny that is, right? It's gonna dry shiny. But again, when we uh, get to the matte varnish, uh, the spray, all that'll be gone. And uh, I like to keep a napkin beside me so I can just wiggle my fingers, get that excess off. Now, as I indicated this one, uh, this transport ship, I'd already done the top, so really what I'm looking to do is just the bottoms. I'm just gonna do the bottom. And then the sides. And you always want to find a point on your miniature that you can basically pinch and hold on to. Because one of the things is, when you're using this quick shade, you, you basically don't want to keep disturbing it. In other words, you don't want to keep going over it and over it. It's kind of like painting. Once you apply some paint, better do it maybe in thin layers, go back over it. The quick shade, once you put it on, it's, it starts to immediately having a drying effect. So if you ain't careful, It'll um, it'll start getting sticky, and then then you're just gonna you're gonna make a mess. So one thing about the quick shade when it dries, you can always add more later if you like. Now this one, this is a hard one to 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 lay down and dry. What I'm gonna do on my ships, I just like to get underneath, but I always like to have something that I can more or less lay the uh, miniature down. That's that where it's not going to fall on the side and then kind of ruin that shading effect that we've got. If I can get it on there. There we go. All right. So we're going to go through a lot of these here until my battery holds out and then we'll go on to the next segment. But just to kind of give you an idea, hopefully all this is uh, visualizing for you. Just going to apply a generous amount of the quick shade, getting all the nooks and the crannies. And I uh, made the mistake of actually not grabbing the wheel on the, the wheels, rather, so I can get the canvas. Okay. And again, it's it's looking a little dark, a little muddy, but trust me, don't sweat it. You can kind of see the. Uh, 
you can see the canvas here we've got. If I can get focus in, there we go. When that dries, that's going to look great. And, and again, trust me, the matte varnish uh, spray is the icing on the cake. It's really going to make this uh, vehicle, all, all your game pieces just stand out. So we'll get to, get to grab a tank here real quick. And again, uh, I think um, some may not be interested in, in this effect, and that's fine. Because, you know, really the idea is just to get your game pieces on and play them. Some people may not even want to want even paint and go to this step, and that's, that's totally fine. You know, again, like all of us, I grew up on the original Axis and Allies, playing with those little plastic men. And I thought they were the coolest thing ever. I was 14 when I got my original Axis and Allies Classic, and I just turned 50 not long ago, and I still love it. Love it. Okay, we've got, uh, got just enough on that one. And again, even when you thin it down, you, you want to... Uh, you want to kind of look it over, make sure you don't have any excess pooling, but the mineral spirits will certainly help prevent a good portion of that anyway. So, so we're good on that one. Now, um, I'm going to go ahead and grab this Italian carrier. These are, these are pretty cool. Again, these are, of course, all of these pieces we're looking at, these are all from historical board gaming, but this is a new one. And, um, like I said, I'm going to, going to be having a, another video coming up soon. And there's a there's a big surprise attached to that one in the form of a giveaway. So I know you guys will stay tuned for that. Trust me, you're not going to want to miss it. And again, um, I mentioned earlier that this is a lighter brown. This is actually armor uh, army painter leather. And. It, it's a light brown. I use this uh, color quite a bit. I actually used this in my Russians for World War I, all my miniatures. It's a great Italian color, even for Axis and Allies Global. Um, you know, uh, Italy and uh, Global 3645. And so what we're, what we're gonna do is we're trying to get all this, and this carrier has a lot of detail. So again, when this, this all dries, all that detail, get it to come into focus, all that detail is gonna be enhanced. And you're gonna get a, a, a really good shading effect. And, uh, and again, as you see, by not dipping it, we're not, um, we're not overdoing it. You know, we're, we're not letting it pool and having to you know just try to continue to wipe and pull that off and hopefully when it dries that you didn't miss a spot and you find out you got just a, a big glob of stain that essentially has uh has ruined your detail so again that's that's what we're trying to avoid all right um i'm gonna do one more i know uh some people don't like long videos and i try not to make them but uh this is the torpedo boat and i tell you these um I've painted several of these already. These really love the quick shade because there's a lot of detail on the top of these torpedo boats, destroyers. And the quick shade just will soak into those uh, little crevices and corners. And again, when it dries, you've got all that instant detail that just really stands out. If I can get this to focus in. You'll know, kind of know what I'm talking about. All right. Yep, my battery died just as I was trying to focus in that torpedo boat destroyer. But in any event, um, since, um, since that time, I have uh, went ahead and finished 
the uh, the final stages of applying the quick shade and um, originally we had uh, done the one side and uh, I have uh, gotten all all parts top to bottom of the game pieces uh, applied quick shade of course we were doing the bottoms of the ships uh, which you can see the the shine um, you know everything worked out great um, again the turpentine um, I think really really does help in the applications and uh, give you an idea how this uh, truck turned out you can see the canvas looks really great uh, of course we got uh, got underneath the vehicle as well and uh, what I think to be just just the right amount of shade uh, again for the you know kind of piece that we're that we're using and uh, you'll notice um, also once once I had completed the um, application of the quick shade and of course the drying time had completed and on the initial uh, application of quick shade I had uh, typically they like them they recommend uh, a drying time about 12 maybe to 18 hours or more depending on your environment uh, but what I tend to do is uh, obviously for purposes of the video we're doing just a few uh, game pieces but I prefer to do quite a few and then I'll let those sit overnight uh, just um, generally because I'll be working on them for you know a few hours perhaps and I'll let everything sit overnight dry real good and then flip the, the game piece over uh, depending on which side I start on and then complete the remainder of the quick shade process and then let that dry and then once um, once all is dry on the um, the game pieces I'll then uh, start the application of uh, applying any decals uh, which you can see we've done in this case uh, here's some uh, roundels uh, for the bomber uh, we've got the uh, side and the bottom as well and uh, even got uh, got a nice little bit. I don't know if it's uh, possible to see here. Nice little bit of uh, fin flash. Maybe we can get that to to focus in. Got the Argentine flag there on the fin. And of course, these um, these are all Argentine pieces uh, for Global thirty six forty five. And uh, of course, we've got the fighters completed as well. I think uh, I think the decals certainly accent the the game pieces, and uh, they turn out uh, make them turn out really nice. And also, a uh, game like uh, thirty six forty five or even Axis Allies, when you got multiple armies, uh, if you're painting your own miniatures, sometimes it's nice to have a little bit of uh, identification because. Some of the colors could very well blend in, and again, you you can see the um, you can see the detail of the quick shade in this fighter. And of course, we got the bottom part as well. Uh, of course, you can see the magnet right there in the middle. Everything's magnetized. Uh, of course, the magnet centered. These are very thin planes, so that's about the that's about the extent of the depth. Really, we can get the magnet, but uh, you can get, kind of get an idea of the detail. Of the plane with the quick shade, and uh, then of course uh, we've got all the tanks finished, and I'll just show you the uh, the Panzer Panzer three, kind of give you an idea of the shade here. Everything turned out uh, really nice. Again, you'll see that gloss, but uh, the final stage here, just in a second, we're going to tap everything off with uh, some Army Painter Matte uh, Varnish Spray. And uh, you'll see no more shine. Everything's going to look great on here. Um, so, um, going back to the decals, what I would um, what I would tell you on the decals, uh, you want to complete your quick shade in its entirety. Uh, you, you do not want to put decals on any of your game pieces uh, and then apply quick shade over top of your decals. 
for instance, like we've uh, like we've done here with the uh, the Italian aircraft carrier, we've got uh, got a nice de decal there in the middle, Italian flag. If we can get it to zoom in, there we go. And uh, that turned out for really nice. But you don't want to uh, perhaps put a decal on and then go apply the quick shade over. And I'll tell you from experience why it will, there's really no other way to say it, it will melt the shit out of your <laughs> decal. So uh, you, you don't want to do that. Um, it's um, quick shade's pretty strong, so with the very, very thin and fine decals that we use, it's not good to, to rub that on. So in any event, just thought I would throw that out there and share it with you. So, uh, okay, well, um, Everything has turned out great. I mean, I'm I'm happy with the result. Uh, obviously, again, the use of uh, you know some turpentine as a mineral spirits to thin things out really does help, in my opinion. And so now it's off to uh, to get the matte varnish spray. Let's finish these uh, little game pieces up, and then we'll conclude this video. Hang tight. Okay. We are all finished, and with the magic of video, we did it in record-breaking time. So we completed the, um, the quick shade process. That's all dried. Uh, you know, we, we had applied the decals, and you want to apply any decals, again, after the quick shade process and after it has dried, because when you uh, then want to use the uh, matte spray, the anti-shine matte spray that you want to put that over top of your existing decal and what that'll do is that'll take some of that shine off of your decal as well so um, again the product uh, that I'm using it's uh, just it's army painter anti-shine matte varnish got a little glare there on the can if I can uh, pop it in here there we go uh, this is a good product um, I'm trying to remember, I think this one might be 10 to $12 for a can. I mean, it's going, it's going to last a long time for you. Um, and I will say, in comparison, uh, this is a premium varnish uh, matte spray. Um, in comparison, say, to like uh, the matte spray clear coat, which I've got at Home Depot. Uh, this is way much better. It, um, the matte clear coat that I've used with Home Depot... Uh, the Rust-Oleum brand uh, still has a bit of a shine to it, uh, just a, a subtle shine. So if you're trying to get something that is completely matte, this, in my opinion, is your better option. And, and again, I, I just like Army Painter products, but I'm sure there's other, other companies out there that do, uh, again, an equal job. So just so you know, uh, I do use quite a few of the, um, the Rust-Oleum paints that you can get at Home Depot. Uh, for painting miniatures uh, on a mass scale uh, and they do a really good job I mean, I, I don't complain about the paint just their their matte clear coat is something that you might not want to To use in the event that you want to have a completely dull shine. So All right. Well, let's uh, let's take a look at some of the pieces Again as, as you recall we had quite a bit of shine on the transporter Get this to focus in a little better And of course, with the magic of video, nothing really wants to cooperate. There we go. You can see that that shine is uh, basically taken off. Uh, you can see the side. Uh, of course, we've got the Argentine flag. And, um, you know, you can still also, again, see the subtle effects of the quick shade. It's just not that glossy, glossy appearance. Okay, and we'll uh, take a look at one of my favorite uh, miniatures, sculpts, uh, for 3645 really, is uh, it's this little torpedo boat destroyer. Got, uh, got quite a bit of detail. And uh, again, you can see, see the effects of the matte varnish that's uh, highlighting some of the tops, uh, obviously around the torpedoes and, you know, just the top of the ship. It, it's, it's a very simple sculpt, but... 
again one of the things why i like quick shade is when you've got a lot of detail on a model it, it really highlights and brings that out and um, here we got uh, a neutrals destroyer uh, again this is a basic sculpt uh, if you're looking for a, a basic type destroyer um, and again all that gloss shine is taken off uh, of course we've got the got the Argentine flag there in the uh, in the front of the boat and then uh, I really like uh, pardon me I really like the uh, cruiser sculpts as well for the neutral nations uh, this is this is a really good uh, sculpt I like it and uh, of course you can see the effects of the uh, the matte varnish uh, excuse me the quick shade uh, then we've got the uh, the matte varnish applied to it uh, it's got a good warm feel to it uh, with the color scheme and again uh, all all related to the to the quick shine um, quick shade pardon me I've got shine and shade on my on my brain <laughs> okay let's get into these panzers I, I think the panzers turned out really great Get my big finger out of the way. You can uh, again. You can see that subtle detail from the uh, the quick shade. Uh, it's not not overpowering by any means. Uh, it's not too dark. It's, uh, in my opinion, just uh, just the right amount of consistency. Uh, again, some some though you may want a little darker. Um, I know I've got. I've got a few in my World War I uh, game pieces that, that are a bit darker. And, uh, but, but again, I, I think really, the, again, the purpose of the use of the mineral spirits, turpentine, as I'd indicated earlier, really helps provide more control when you're mixing this and applying it with a brush, as opposed to the dipping and, and uh, wiping off type method. So, uh, you know, again, I, I'm really pleased with the way these come out. You know, it's got that little grit and grime that you would probably expect to see um, on an Africa, Africa core tank in uh, in the sand. And uh, again, just uh, just turned out really well. Looks like. And of course, here we've got the uh, the Italian carriers. Again, all that gloss shine is uh, taken off. Still got the uh, the detail. You know, from the um, uh, quick shade, just again, just enough to highlight. Uh, you know, help help some of that detail of the sculpt stand out. And uh, probably my favorite part of this uh, process for this video is the trucks. I think they turned out great. Got that canvas uh, really highlighted with the uh, quick shade. Uh, looks great. Uh, looks uh, weathered, aged, and um, of course we got the uh, got the Argentine flag there on the side. And and uh, again, uh, you know the um, the Army Painter matte spray does a does a good job, uh, in my opinion, of uh, really dulling it down. Um, now also with with the use of the um, with with the use of the matte varnish, you, you still need to be careful. You don't want to apply too much. You don't want to apply too thick of a um, coat. Uh, like any matte varnish, uh, while it'll dry dull and matte, my experience is, is if you do put too much on without it drying, again, we want to do thin layers, uh, sometimes it can have the opposite effect. It can come out shiny. So you want to try to try to avoid that if possible. And uh, here we've got the fighter that uh, really turned out well. Of course, got my magnets underneath, which I had shown earlier. Flight stands. I think uh, I think these are these are really nice sculpts as well. Again, you can still see that detail. So again, the purpose of the um, you know the matte uh, the matte varnish, excuse me, is not going to um, it's not going to take away from the detail of the quick shade. Uh, it's just going to dull it down, uh, make it look a little more weathered. 
and uh, here we got the bomber. I uh, like how this one turned out. Maybe if I had to do it over again, I, I would have used just a bit smaller roundels on the wings on the top part. Um, but this is the only bomber that I'm going to be making for this uh, neutral nation. Uh, I think overall, though, it uh, it turned out the way I needed it and the way I was looking for. So uh, again, pretty happy with this. And then, and this is a cool sculpt as well. This is this is a fun bomber. It's got a you know, it's got uh, all the right parts uh, for decaling. It's not too thin. You know, it's got a got a good side profile. So if you if you really wanted to dress it up even further with decals, even for other nations, not not just the one I'm doing for Argentina, uh, you could put some numbers on the side, and again, it would just turn out really well. So finally, uh, here are the uh, the tanks. Uh, again, I. I like these sculpts. They they just turned out turned out really good. I mean, it's got just enough of hint of the uh, the quick shade detail still, and uh, they're all dulled down and ready to be placed on the game board at some point. So, all right, uh, guys, I appreciate it. I hope this is uh, this video has been helpful and informative. Uh, you might see in the foreground back here. Got the next contestants ready to go so i uh, just wanted to again make a sort of an instructional video about the use of uh, quick shade um, as well as uh, matte varnish spray and the method and techniques which i i employ to um, to basically give you more control over over the whole process and something that you'll be uh, proud of when you get finished um, put on your game board and trust me your players on the other side they'll They'll be in awe of all your pieces. <laughs> so, all right, guys, I appreciate it. I uh, hope you guys have a great weekend. It's Friday again. This is the Plastic Commando. Over and out.